So when we are given a picture like this, and we are asked what is the value of the definite integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx, we don't have f of x, we just have a picture representing f of x. So going back to that idea of just using geometric formulas to find the area under the curve, because the definite integral represents the area under the curve between 0 and 2. Now, we do have this idea of signed area. If the region is below the x-axis, then that area is negative. Okay, computed like normal, but if it's below the x-axis, then we consider it negative area. Okay, also, I don't know that this comes up, but if you move from right to left, instead of left to right, then it's... Uh, the area has the opposite sign. So if we, if we were given the integral from 6 to 2, that is above the x-axis, but we're going right to left, so it would be a negative answer. And if we were going from 2 to 0, it would actually be a positive answer. And that's a little weird, but it's below the x-axis, but you're moving in the opposite direction, so you've got two negatives and a positive. Yes, Al? How are you supposed to figure out the area is going on? Well, we don't have to know the height. What shape is this? I don't know the equation. Of it's a semicircle. You don't have to know the equation of a semicircle. We are not writing the equation. How do you find the area of a circle? Oh, I know. Pi r squared. What is the radius of a semicircle right here? One. What? One. One. Yeah. No, I'm saying you can't find the area. Yes, you do one half of the area of the circle. I, I asked what was the radius, and I heard one half come out of Paul's mouth, and I, anyways, okay? So if we're finding the, uh, the value of the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx, then yes, it is one half, because we've got half of the circle. Yes, I'm right. Okay. It is one half of a circle. It's below the axis, so it's a negative. Pi r squared, the radius here is 1, okay, the radius is 1, so this is negative pi over 2. I was like, uh, yes? I was expecting you to be right up top. I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, let's do from 0 to 6. Okay, let's do from zero to what? What? Uh, never mind. Okay. I was thinking of the unit circle. And no, that's all for two. Okay, okay. No, no. Too far, too far. No trick here. No trick, just circles. <laughs> just circles. Okay, from zero to six, we have two pieces to our figure here. Okay, we've got from zero to two, we just figured out that part. Plus, from 2 to 6, that's a different circle. Okay, what's the radius of that circle? 2. 2. two. Okay, it's still half of a circle, but its radius is 2, and it's above the axis, so it's positive. Um, so let's see here, that's 4. 4 over 2, that's 2 pi. So we've got negative 1 half plus 2. Uh, that gives us 1 and a half. So this answer is... 3 halves pi. Let me phrase it that way so you don't want to think angles. Okay? 3 halves pi, not 3 pi over 2. It's the same thing, but just trying to help you. Okay. Uh, what if we had to go from 1 to 4? Okay? What if we had to go from 1 to 4? What are we looking at there? Half of, Half of the semicircle. So we're looking at a fourth of the entire circles. So we can kind of use our calculations from before. So um, instead of negative one-half times pi, for the first part, we've got negative one-fourth times pi. So the first one is negative pi over four. Plus the area of... The second circle is 4 pi, right? Well, that was when we multiplied it by 1 half. The area of kitchen, please, at this time, we need all juniors. Okay, so uh, from 2 to 4, the area of that entire circle was 4 pi. We're looking at a fourth of it.
it. So it's one fourth of four pi, so that's just pi. So we've got negative one fourth plus one, so that is three fourths pi. Is it a coincidence that that is exactly half of the other one? <coughs> kind of, but if you think about it, we just took half of this area and half of this area, so it makes sense that this answer is half of that answer, right? Because we took half of each one that we had already figured out. Okay, now that last one, okay, that last one is combining um, kind of a little bit of what we've been doing with the absolute value, but what this means, all this means is um, it's not going to change anything that was already positive here, right? Because the absolute value of a positive is still a positive. Yes, so if your child set that middle part equal to zero, it was inside the absolute value to find where it changes. It doesn't give well, we don't anything. have to do that here because we're just looking at the picture. We're just looking at the picture. But okay. if you were to do that, would it be two? Or two? Yes, yes. We, we, we would split this interval up at two. Yes. Okay. Um, because that's where it changes from negative to positive. Okay. So if we're looking from one to six, okay. So we've got two different regions here. We're looking at the area from 1 to 2. Well, we just figured that out. That was negative pi over 4, but it's the absolute value. So that becomes positive pi over 4. And then we've got the area from 2 to 6. Uh, that was 2 pi. All right? We got it right there. Half of the 4 pi. Okay, circle. So let's see here. Two is eight over four. So that would be nine over four pi. Nine over four pi. Can you show me the junior thing? I'm about to go to the gym. All juniors to the gym. Take your car. Are we going to take your gym? No, just juniors. It's ACT stuff. All right. Let's do this last example here. Okay, let's do this last example. Um, similar thing here, but we're not talking about circles here. We have two line segments. Yes, technically you could find the equations of those line segments, but why do that? Just use geometry, okay? Just use your ge uh, geometric formulas. So let's find the area from zero to three. Note that part of that interval is under the x-axis. So we've got two triangles here. When we're going from zero to three, we have this triangle, okay? We're always talking about the area between the curve and the x-axis. So for the first part, it's actually above the curve. For the second part, it's below the curve, okay? It's all in relation to the x-axis here. So from, from zero to one, what's that area? Negative one-half, right? One-half base times height. The base is one, the height is one, so it's negative one-half. Plus, what's the area of uh, from one to three? One-half times the base. Well, the base is two, so that gives us one times the height. That is two. So negative one-half plus two, three-halves. Yes? I'm sorry? Yes? Yes? What do you mean if we did it the way that we've been doing it? If you had equations, yes. I, are you talking about splitting it up? That's what Allie was asking about. It would split it, it changes it too. I, I'm not quite sure why I have the question. From 3 to 5, okay, we've got positive area from 3 to 4. One half times the base times the height. The base is one, the height is two, so one half times two is one. From four to five, that's negative because it's below the x axis. Uh, same scenario there. Uh, the base is one, the height is two times one half, so that's negative one. So from three to five, we've overall we've accumulated nothing because we had positive and then we had the same amount negative, so there's no area there. Now, um, I want you to 
Think about this one. Okay, I want you to think about these two. Find A, B, and C such that the following integrals are as large as possible. Okay, that's your challenge for tonight. Think about it.